Listen, let's talk to David. He's, he's been hanging on for a thousand years. He describes himself here in London as a Wheelstone FC fan. Hello, David. Hi, guys. Good thank, evening. Thank you for joining us. Tell us about your experience. Uh, well, I, I, I found it really interesting to hear what you had to say about the price of going to um, Premier League football because I, I feel I could go to Premier League football, but I choose to go to non-league football because the attitude of, of the Premier League clubs and the disloyalty of the clubs towards the players and the players towards the clubs, plus the bad behaviour, the cheating with all the rolling around. Um, I just don't think that brand premiership football um, is, is worth the money. It, it's not the price in itself. It's what you get for that, for that price, for that experience. All right. Uh, and and you don't get a feeling that you're being treated with respect. What do you get at Wheelstone then for your money? Well, I think we get, we get obviously, we get grassroots football, but we get... Uh, a group of guys who really want to play football. Most of the guys that play for Wollstone have been with professional clubs and haven't made it. Uh, some of them are younger guys who want to make it, and this is a stepping stone for them. But the club itself is run on a community-type basis. They do a lot of work in the community, for the community. Um, you see a lot of people working there on the board and um, match day um, uh, helpers. They're all voluntary. They're tremendous job to, to just keep the club going. David, who, who, did, you, who did you go? Who, who did you support when you were when you were following the, the upper leagues of football? I I actually supported Tottenham. Right. So when you're watching Wheelstone, um, and I'm sure yeah. enjoying the experience, does there no part of you that wishes you were watching Harry Kane and Deli Alley? It, it doesn't actually. No. No. I I really prefer this sort of experience. Uh, this, this sort of football. You have access to the board. You can speak to the board about the club. You can actually speak oh, that's to no the good, players. Simon. You, can, that. <laughs> you can speak to the manager. And, and no, it is good. It is good because it makes you feel part and parcel of that club. Well, it I think, I think that's, the, to the club. that's the crux, David, isn't it? I think what you're what you're saying, and I, I actually understand it implicitly. It's a sense of it's a sense of belonging. It's a sense of of, of placement. And I think there's an element of the way that the Premier League. Uh, has gone, and we mustn't just forget it's not just the Premier League, it's the Championship as well, actually, which is almost the Premier League too without the finance. Um, it, it, it doesn't do enough to engender what is this sense of inherent belonging. And, and obviously, Theo Pathetis, who was a mate of mine, spent a long time sponsoring non league football. And I personally love grassroots football, I, I love watching the intensity and the integrity of the manner in which these players play. Uh, the manner in which people support it, and I gain and garner just as much satisfaction at w watching that level. And okay, technical ability. Sometimes you appreciate the beauty of what some of these top top players can do. But there's also something about the British mentality that we want to see something that we are part of, something that means something to us, something that we have some sort of influence over. And I get his point entirely. I mean, uh, there's, there's no arguing with him. I, I, no, there's no arguing. I, I worked South East for the last few years, so I haven't been able to go. But when um, I used to work during the week here at Talksport and to have the weekends off, go down to the South Coast, uh, got family connection with my father-in-law, um, goes to see Eastbourne Borough. Um, they were briefly in the Vanarama, but uh, they've now dropped down again at a league. And the experience there is really nice, I have to be honest. One tiny detail, I'm not a big drinker, I, I, those days are long since behind me. But to be able to sit and watch a, a, a football match, it's 22 blokes kicking a ball about, that doesn't change, and have your drink in your hand, and occasionally have a little sip out, particularly in the summer months, or, you know, August, September, October. It's just wonderful. Should I tell you something that I, I, I think will be interesting to observe, and I don't mean to compare Bournemouth to a non-league club. I wonder how Bournemouth supporters feel about Bournemouth now from being a, 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 a team that was almost relegated from mm -hmm. the Football League mm -hmm. with all of that camaraderie and everything that went with Bournemouth. Because we gave them pre-season friendlies at, at Palace when I owned them. And obviously, the, the Bournemouth are now up there with Palace. And now they're an established Premier League club. And I, and, and I wonder how much that has changed the dynamics and DNA of Bournemouth. And I wonder, and I think I know the answer, if Wealdston went up the pyramid and money started to become a big factor, how much people would still feel a part of that club. They would absolutely love that they were going up and playing Crystal Palace and Tottenham and all the rest of it. They would absolutely miss some of the things they had. It's a difficult, to use your phrase mm. of the day, a difficult balancing act. Let's get another experience.